Hi everyone, Juan Finance here. Thanks for coming back. And in this video, we're going to cover the March uh, 2023 performance of the portfolio. Here's our usual disclaimer. So our discussion points, um, the usual, we have here our market update. Uh, we'll cover interest rate and inflation, uh, also the currencies and major stock market uh, indices and then the banking sector. And then for the portfolio review section, uh, the performance, the dividend yield, and then exposure, and then lastly, the risk management. So for our market update, um, here we have the U.S. interest rate and then uh, the inflation. So the blue line here is actually the Fed's rate, while the broken line or the dotted line is actually the inflation. Now, the um, policy rate of the Fed sits at 5%, while the... Um, Inflation is actually at six, although we're, we're seeing already an, um, a declining phase of the inflation, but it's still far from the target uh, out of Fed, which is around uh, 2%. So we might see um, elevated uh, interest rate, okay, for, for maybe for the entire year, and then before the, the, the actual pivot. So uh, if you're going to look at here, that's another, uh, I think that's a 25 basis points hike by the Fed um in, in the month of march so we'll we'll be seeing higher um, interest rate uh, for quite a while uh, and until we see the inflation uh, going back to the fed's target at two percent so very similar pattern here for uh the eurozone so the the blue line is the uh, ecb policy rate and the uh, dotted line again is the inflation so the rate sits at 3.5 Okay, you, you can see here that's just another uh, 50 basis points hike by the ECB and um, the inflation is actually on a declining phase. Yeah. But again, the, the target of the ECB is around 2%. So we might be seeing again, an elevated interest rate, uh, high interest rate level until we see that inflation going back to the normal uh, target of the ECB, which is around uh, near 2%. Now for China, we have a very different uh, pattern here. So China interest rate is flat and uh, inflation is easing, uh, going down trend from, if you forget to look at here, the broken line at around, um, I think that's above 2.5, this line here, and now dropped to 1%. Now the target uh, inflation of China is around uh, or near 3%. So we might be you know, seeing a lower interest rate uh, in China, which is now uh, sitting at around 3.6 or uh, near 3.6%. Uh, so if you're going to look at that's almost flat since um, June, July, October last year. Okay. Now, again, because of the um, easy inflation, so their target is to push back inflation back to uh, near 3% to, you know, spur uh, economic activity. So for our um, currency, we have here the dollar bond index, uh, the blue line here. If you're going to look at, we actually have this uh, bearish trend of the dollar index coming from 105 now, uh, currently trading at 102. And for our um, euro, that's actually the green line here. So since we are experiencing um, a weakening dollar, we are seeing here a stronger euro if you can recall we're coming actually from a parity with dollar sometime last year but now it's actually gaining strength and now currently trading at 1.09 and lastly we have here the us dollar and the chinese yuan pair if you're going to look at here sometime um, early this year it actually traded near uh, this data point here, but it actually gaining traction and uh, gaining strength versus dollar. Now currently trading at uh, $6.8 um, per Chinese yuan. Okay, and here's the performance of the major stock market index. Um, the Dow Jones, US 30, is actually the blue line here. So it actually recovered uh, from its uh, pre-COVID level. Uh, very similar pattern here for uh, the Euro 50 which is actually the tangerine line and the shanghai which is actually the green line so uh, the three major indices are actually both up and for this year uh, september 2023 we're actually seeing their 
uh, an upward trajectory except for um, the Dow, which is actually like moving sideways from this data point here, uh, ending at um, near 33,400. Okay. And then we have the banking sector. So the latest news about uh, Silicon Valley, Signature Bank, and um, Credit Suisse, it's actually um, pushing a lot of pressure for a lot of uh, regional banks and major uh, banks as well around the globe. So here, uh, these are actually the, the ETFs that would capture that. Uh, XLF is actually the financial sector of the U.S. and um, uh, Euro, uh, Euro, Eurozone Financial or the EU FN is actually here, the, the Tangerine Line. So if you're going to look at before that um, uh, banking crisis issues, the both of the indices are actually trading uh, sideways from their October performance here uh december and then boom right after that news sometime in march early this year uh, early this month you can see here that there's a big uh, decline here uh, also for the slf so again um the uh, banking crisis uh, issues about uh, those um banks suffering liquidity may actually um uh, ripple effect to larger banks and other um, um regional banks but uh, all we need to do is to identify those banks with uh, very strong fundamentals and uh, uh, explore opportunities. These ETFs also are actually trading um, at uh, extreme uh, oversold levels if you run the technical. So um, I think that they are um, up for opportunity to buy. You just have to uh, identify when and uh, of course your horizon if you can write the volatility so for the portfolio review we jump here for um, a boy fund that's uh, year to date uh, 1.08 percent dividend yield is still at least uh, eight percent average risk score is four and uh, the maximum daily drawdown is around 3.75 um, so for the performance uh, year to date, you can see here, although it already captured April, negative uh, 0.46, but this is uh, basically the performance uh, up by 5.9 last January. And for Feb and March, it's actually moving on the downward um, uh, unrealized, with unrealized losses. But uh, again, we are um, defensively cost averaging and trading. So hopefully by uh, second quarter this year, we will have this um, Usually performance moving up above uh, 1%. So for our dividend yield and trading results, uh, dividend is at least 8%. And uh, if we're going to look at here, our trading results are actually doing good. 61 trades for the last 30 days, 100% profitability that would equate to around 0.62 um, realized gains. So for our geographic uh, and sector exposure, again, our um, large exposures in the U.S. Uh, would account at least 46% of the allocation of the portfolio. Next, we have Brazil, uh, Australia, Hong Kong, and um, others. For the sector, we have real estate here again, a very large portfolio allocation. The main reason is that our main objective is to really deliver a consistent monthly income, and the only sector that can give as that kind of uh, yield is the real estate sector. Now, uh, we have a caveat here because uh, the higher the interest rate, uh, the, the more likelihood that the real estate sector would suffer. But again, we have to look for fundamentals and identify those REITs that are really, really um, extremely oversold, but again, with solid fundamentals and then um, uh, load up some shares and then hold for uh, the long term. So. Next, we have financials. Again, rising interest rate may benefit the, the financial sector. So that's why we are also um, exposing the portfolio to financials uh, largely. And then um, we also have the hedge uh, bonds. So right now, I think the allocation is 5 to at least 6% uh, allocation to money market and uh, medium term bonds. Our um, risk management, uh, we have an average risk score of four, so pretty much every month, uh, except for these months here. Um, I think this sometime November, December last year, 
uh, uh, daily drawdown of negative 3.75, weekly negative 6, and for yearly, that's um, actually negative 20. So that's it for our March uh, performance review. Thank you very much again for tuning in. And I hope that you give the video a like, um, share, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember to uh, follow us in eToro. You can also scan the QR code here, and that would actually um, lead you to our eToro um, dashboard.